Next up in the medical physics topic is uh, scanners, so quite generally. Um, we're really only going to talk about one type of scanner here, but it's got a couple of different uses. So um, we're looking at uh, radioactive tracers and how we can use them to study the body. So radioactive tracers, basically we take a radioactive isotope or a radioactively labelled molecule and we stick it in the human body sees where it's, to see where it goes and see if there's anything that's wrong. Uh, basically we just take advantage of the natural elements tending to congregate in certain parts of the body. And if they congregate in the wrong place or um, don't congregate where they should, we know that something's wrong. So examples of things that we use are technetium 99M and fluorine 18. Uh, those are the most common radioactive traces that we use. Now, in order to detect where these radioactive materials are, we need to have a means of uh, detecting the radiation given off. So what we use are gamma cameras. So these are cameras that detect the gamma rays that are emitted by these radioactive traces. Now, obviously, it has to be gamma because alpha will be very damaging and won't even leave the body. Uh, beta will be quite damaging and won't get through the body, so it's got to be gamma emitters. They're not going to be our only option, really. So inside a gamma camera, we have something called a scintillator, which is basically a great big crystal, often made of sodium iodide. And what this crystal does is that when the gamma ray hits it, it produces a burst of light. That light is then picked up by detectors, and those detectors are called photomultiplier tubes. Um, and they are just located directly behind the crystal. The output from these photomultiplier tubes is then sent to a computer. The computer processes the data and turns it into an image. Now, in order to try and focus the gamma rays so that we don't just end up with light hitting everywhere, we have something called a collimator. Now, this is basically just a grid of very long lead tubes that only allows gamma rays that are directly lined up with the tube to hit specific parts of the crystal. So basically it just sort of removes the background noise so that you can focus in on the picture. And um, So that's a gamma camera. We're going to look at, um, I've got a video actually which I'm going to show you in class which really beautifully illustrates that. Um, so that's a gamma camera which we can use um, just to look for radioactive traces. Now we also use gamma cameras as part of PET scanners. So PET scanner stands for positron emission tomography. So either PET imaging or PET scans. Um, and again, this is another way of making a 3D image. And this time we're using um, radiation to help us do it. Now note it's called positron emission, so we are looking at things that are emitting positrons, so this is beta plus decay. So the radioactive material we inject is a beta plus emitter, and that positron that is emitted is going to interact with an electron in the patient's body. Matter meets antimatter, well we know that causes annihilation, so we get two gamma rays that are given off that fly off in opposite directions. Within the PET scanner, we use um, the gamma cameras to detect these two opposite um, gamma rays so that we can figure out where they came from. Um, so even though it's called a PET scanner, so it's positron emission, we are detecting the gamma rays that come from the annihilation of a positron with an electron in the human body. So again, this could be a topic for a six mark kind of question. So what we would say with this one is that um, radioactive isotope is injected into the patient, it emits a positron, the positron interacts with an electron, we need to make sure we're talking singulars here, um, so a positron interacts with an electron and annihilates, that produces two gamma rays which travel in opposite directions. The gamma rays are detected by a ring of detectors that are all around the patient. The two detections that arrive at the same time are used to figure out um, where the interaction came from. Now what they will do is they look for two that are diametrically opposed they will then use the slight difference in the time they arrived to figure out exactly how far through the patient this um, occurred. Now they will likely receive many hundreds of them from this one decay and this can sort of cross them over and cross them over and find out where they came from. But they do use the de delay time 
in order to figure it out. So PET scans, they are non-invasive, which means that they don't involve any cutting, but they do involve ionising radiation. They're most often used to look for cancer and to check on the effects of cancer therapy. We can use PET scans to look at hearts and look at blood flow, and we can also use them to look at brains and look for um, if she, uh, people have tumours or uh, seizure dis disorders and try and check if we can do surgery. Okay, so that is uh, radioactive traces and PET scanners. We will talk about this a bit more in class. Okay, right, remember, any questions, ask when you see me.